What's up, everybody? I'm Finn McKenty. This is my second channel where I talk about business and marketing and personal development, stuff like that that's not really a fit for my main channel because it's not directly related to music. I like how I said my main channel. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Not a fit for my main channel. Anyhow, in this video, I wanted to talk about something that is unfortunately part of the music scene this toxic, negative, self-defeating kind of thinking where people are always pointing fingers, playing the blame game, refusing to take responsibility for their own failures or shortcomings, always making excuses. And then when someone else does have success, they're always quick to discredit that person by saying that that person had some sort of advantage that they don't. Basically, the blame game. And if you have been playing the blame game, you gotta stop right now, and I will explain why in this video. Duncan loves complaining uses it to express his anger, but it never helps. Well, first, let me give you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. First one here is from my video about Haley Williams. I think Haley Williams is one of those kids whose parents were rich. I would go to Warp Tour and see these really young metalcore whatever bands. I was in a band too that would have loved to play Warp Tour and tour internationally, but three out of four band members' parents weren't rich. Our parents treated our career ambitions as an annoyance when it meant the world to us. We never even got around to producing t-shirts for the band because we had no money. We had to pirate recording programs and record in bedrooms and release the album as CDRs with no support. We were like 15 or 16 and applied for jobs so we could get better music gear but couldn't get a job. I think young kids that make it in the music industry has more to do with what their parents' job is than anything. This line of thinking essentially boils down to economic determinism. The idea that your success in life boils down to how much money your parents have. Now this falls apart very quickly if you just think about it for a minute because number one, think about all the people who were born with rich parents and really wanted to get famous but didn't. So clearly money is not enough to buy success. Of course having money helps, of course being born good looking helps, but we can see from just like the historical record that it's not enough to make you successful. And by the same token, well, look at all these rappers or, you know, people in any kind of genre that come from nothing and end up becoming super successful. It takes like 30 seconds of just a little bit of critical thinking to pick this one apart. And the reason why is because people do not want to take accountability for their failures. They want to be able to blame some factor beyond their control, such as the circumstances of their birth anything but to accept the fact that maybe they made a bad decision, maybe they didn't work hard enough, or maybe they just needed to keep going, and if they kept doing what they were doing, they would have eventually become successful. You hear this a lot from people who are blaming, like, the industry, too. Like, labels won't pay attention to us because of this, that, or the other. It's all Facebook's fault because they kill the organic reach on your posts. Or insert any number of other excuses. You've heard all of them before. They'll blame Mark Zuckerberg. They'll point the finger at anybody except for themselves. Or another example of this, people seem to get really angry when I bring this up, but I'm going to do it anyway because fuck it. The Dead Kennedys. I used to like this band when I was a kid, like 13 or 14, but by the time I got to be like 15 and I'd started listening to bands like Youth of Today, I started to see the problem with the Dead Kennedys and bands like that. It's basically, all the Dead Kennedys songs are about like being angry at the government or the cops or jocks or MTV. It's just always like pointing the finger and yelling at these authority figures and institutions and saying, it's your fault that I'm unhappy. MTV, get off the MTV. And obviously there's some truth to that. I mean, their criticisms of these institutions and authority figures are valid. They weren't wrong. But my question is, so what? So let's say the jocks are assholes and let's say that MTV sucks and they play terrible music. And let's say that the state government of California is incompetent and corrupt. Is there anything that you can do about those things? No. So why are you wasting your breath complaining about it? Well, I think the answer lies in a concept from psychology called locus of control. Think of this as like a ball. And this ball is the thing that controls your life. You can either have an internal locus of control or an external locus of control. And that basically means where does this ball that controls your life live? If it lives inside of you, then you have an internal locus of control. That means that ultimately you believe that you are the person in control of your life. And of course, we all understand that there's lots and lots of things that are not within our control. But if you have an internal locus of control, you believe that the choices you make when you respond to those things that are out of our control are what's important. And if you have an external locus of control, if this little ball that controls your life lives, you know, on the other side of town, that means that you don't believe you really truly are in control of your life. 
or as they put it in the literature from Psychology Today, locus of control is an individual's belief system regarding the causes of his or her experiences and the factors to which that person attributes success or failure. Does that ball live inside me or does it live outside me? And what's interesting is this has been studied a lot over the years and it's super clear, like you can look this up, super clear that people with an internal locus of control are happier and healthier and have better life outcomes. From the same article, the benefits of this were specified in a research study that looked at the potential health effects of the locus of control trait. Researchers found that of more than 7,500 British adults followed since birth, so this is not some like half-assed survey, they followed 7,500 people for years, those who had shown an internal locus of control at the age of 10 were less likely to be overweight at age 30, less likely to describe their health as poor, or show high levels of psychological stress. The major explanation for these findings was that children with a more internal locus of control behave more healthily as adults because they have greater confidence in their ability to influence outcomes through their own actions. So that's what it comes down to. And that is actually why it makes me so annoyed and upset when I see this stuff happening in my comments or anywhere else in the scene. It's not because this is gonna hurt Haley's feelings. She doesn't give a fuck what this random asshole on YouTube says. She's gonna be successful anyway because unlike that guy, she has an internal locus of control. The reason why it upsets me is because I see so many people holding themselves back with this kind of thinking. Because think about it, when you attribute your failures to something outside your control, that basically means you're giving up control of your life. You're saying, I'm just this pawn tossed around by things beyond my control. My success or failure is not up to the choices that I make. It's just like, did the roll of the dice go my way today? And is my band gonna become successful because some gatekeeper with the magical musical success fairy dust decided to sparkle it on me? And let me get super specific here. I'm gonna talk about this in terms of music just because I think that's something that everyone watching will understand. The way you gotta think about this is less about problems and more about solutions. Whatever problem somebody puts in front of you, there is a solution. Go around it, go through it, go over it. It doesn't matter, you gotta find a solution. So as an example of a band, one of the things that I hear a lot is, well, we don't have the money to record. It costs $10,000 to record an EP and we don't have that kind of money, so we're screwed. The first thing I would say to that is, you're right, you're screwed. I would break up and stop right now because you're doomed. There's nothing you can do. Sorry guys, just wasn't meant to be. You weren't born to rich parents, so you're screwed. But right after I made them think I was an asshole by telling them that, I would start to think about solutions. So first of all, it does not cost $10,000 to record an EP. It does not cost $5,000 to record an EP. You can get somebody to do it for a hundred bucks. Is it gonna be the best recording of all time? Probably not, but it's enough to get you started. And if your song is good and you guys do a good job of marketing it, it's enough to get you started. Or you can learn how to record yourself. And then again, people will start making excuses. Well, I don't have a powerful enough computer or I can't afford the software. Again, bullshit. People like Joey Sturgis made amazing recordings on computers that now you could buy for like a hundred bucks. So go ask Joey whatever piece of shit Dell PC he had in 2007 that he recorded the Devil Wars Prada and Attack Attack on. Go buy that because it was good enough for him, it's good enough for you. And then you might say, well, okay, we've got this recording, but we don't have the money for marketing or PR, so nobody's gonna notice us. We're screwed. And then I go look at their social media and I see that they're only posting once every two weeks. And when they do, it's like some shitty ad mat. And it's clear to me that they're not even trying. Or we don't have the budget for a great music video. Well, again, you have a phone and guess what? Creativity is free. You don't need to have a big budget to make something cool. Like look at all these Astari rappers. Like every single one of those videos is just shot on an iPhone in some random location, like a bedroom or a parking lot or a construction site. And then they just put it into iMovie and did some sick edit on it. Again, is it the music video of your dreams? Maybe not, but it's something, it's still pretty cool. And then you might say, well, yeah, we don't know anybody in the music industry, so nobody's gonna give us a chance. All right, well then get to know people in the music industry. Social media exists, it's not like it's hard to find these people. And I could keep going forever with this, but the point is 99 times out of 100, if you go into it looking for a solution and believing that you have the power to be successful, then you will be given enough time and effort. It's as simple as that.
And yes, of course, there are real obstacles out there. Absolutely. Being born into a rich family with great supportive parents and being really good looking and six feet tall, like that definitely helps. And I understand lots of us are dealing with like mental health issues. I've made videos about this before. I have too. And some people legitimately do have an easier path to success than others. But that doesn't really directly affect you because you can't do anything about that. All you can do is play the cards you have been dealt, make the most of what you have. And if you are watching this, there's a very, very high chance that you have everything you need to do whatever it is that you wanna do. It might be a little bit harder for you than someone else, but remember, there's probably literally billions of people in the world who were born with way, way less than you have, and I would suggest that you spend a moment being grateful for that and recognizing the fact that you probably won the lottery by being born where you were born, when you were born, and less on the fact that Haley Williams' parents were rich. All right, my friends, that is it for today's installment of Old Man Screams at Cloud. And next time you catch yourself maybe playing the blame game, we all do it sometimes, just press stop. Just say to yourself, I'm not gonna do that. Break yourself of that habit. And once you really internalize that idea of locus of control, I promise you, you're gonna be a happier person and good things are gonna happen to you. So I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna sign off for now, but I will see you next time.